and la ha la. And in some cases, they may be right. So nobody in this movement gets along with anybody. There's more division among three quarters of a million than there is among uh, a billion Christians in the world. I know this is a shock to many of you, but every once in a while, we need to be shocked. When I tell you this, trust me, I'm one of the pioneers of this movement. I founded the MIA, I founded the ULNYC. I was right there when the Two House Movement was founded and worked with Agnes and Bachi Wooten. I know what I'm talking about. I've seen it. The, the hatred, the pe people that I, that I had. I brought, I, I've tried to be a peacemaker between warring parties, and because I was trying to bring people together, I even pulled out a bottle of wine to try to chill them out in case they got hot tempered. We didn't get drunk, you know. But say, have a glass of wine, let's talk. You don't like him, he doesn't like you. And then I wound up losing both their friendships because I tried to bring them together and make peace. Let me know if you find a Nazarene Israelite hospice facility. Would you, would you do that? Now, I'm not saying there aren't Nazarene Israelite doctors. I'm not saying there are not Nazarene Israelite nurses. I'm not saying there are not Nazarene Israelite caregivers. I'm not saying that. I'm saying I'm talking about these guys. The rabbis, the leaders, the elders, what have they done with the money? What have they done with your money? Has anyone ever presented a vision from the leadership to the people so they can do the Torah? Because Rashi says it is the doers of the Torah that are tzaddik, not the ones who discuss Torah only. Talk to me somebody. Can I get a witness? I said, can I get a witness? Amen. Baruch Hashem El. Tell it. Those who sit around all day in Torah discussions are not keeping Torah and they can never be justified because the word of Yahweh says it is not the hearers who are justified, it is the doers. And you know what doing Torah means? It doesn't mean going to synagogue and believing in the Torah. It means what? Feeding the hungry, clothing the the naked, That's right. bringing comfort to the AIDS patients, visiting the sick, doing nursing home ministry. Do you know every Christian school, every Christian school that I've ever heard of, born again, spiritual Christian school, has a nursing home ministry. Did you know that? And they go to visit people in nursing homes. How about a Nazarene Israelite nursing home? Don't hold your breath. You'll be holding it an awfully long time. Forget about the Dade County Yellow Pages. You won't find it in any Yellow Pages. I don't care if you use a national listing or an international listing. You won't find one. Hello, what's wrong with this picture? We are a movement that talks a good talk. We talk Torah. We argue Torah. We argue doctrine. We've got Torah da'at. But we do not perform the Torah. And we laugh at those who do. And that's why my attitude is wrong. So I ask you to forgive me. Not forgive me for my doctrine, but for my attitude. Because I can't tell you the countless times the church has done Torah by helping me. The countless times the church has done Torah by helping my wife. The countless times the church has done Torah by helping you with your food bill and your electric bill. These people do Torah. They don't know what verse it is. They don't know what chapter it is. They don't know the full Torah, Shabbat, Moedim. But they, but they are being declared righteous by their works. Let's continue. Verse 14. Romeo 2, 14. Again, this message, understanding our church brethren. So don't ever come to me and say, well, how can they be saved? Why don't you reverse it? How can Nazarene Israelites and Messianics be saved when they don't do the Torah? Well, all they do is talk about it and have a lot of knowledge that puffs up. When knowledge puffs up, but Ahava and love edify somebody. Come on, now. Come on. Now, I'm not condemning the Nazarene Israelite movement. I'm not ch exchanging condemnation of the church for condemnation of the Nazarene movement. I'm challenging somebody to do something. So until someone steps forward, the only thing we've got going is the Chaim B'Yeshua Human Resource Center on your arms from Israel. Well, we have, I've lined up doctors, I've lined up health care workers, I've lined up chiropractors who list themselves in the services free of charge. And if someone is in Florida or someone is in Maryland and they're willing to drive to get to a health care provider, they'll get free health care and free um, cancer care, free uh, in-home nurse care. We, I put together a network of 
individuals because I had to bypass the leaders who couldn't give a hoot because they were too busy being hypocritical and arguing Torah and arguing with other rabbis on which congregation is properly applying the Torah. Therefore, not a single leader has done anything. So in the Chaim Ben Yeshua Human Resource Center, what I've done is I've bypassed the leaders, the same ones who had no sermons or nothing to teach people for six weeks. Hello? What's wrong with this picture? And I went right to the people. So if you're a doctor, if you're a healthcare provider, if you're an in-home hospice provider, or a, 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 a nurse, or a, or a healthcare worker, whatever your calling is, if you want, you want to serve Yahweh, but you don't know how, this with the High MB Yeshua Human Resource Center will get you listed. People can contact you, and you can bypass that leadership that will never do anything because they don't have any money. We can't even buy one refrigerated truck to deliver goods to the victims of Hurricane Katrina. You know why? Because whatever money there is, doesn't go to those things because we don't see that as important. We see what's important as, do you know some Kabbalah? Do you know oh, some, you know some Gemara? Do you know some Mishnah? Uh -huh. It's nice that you know the Torah and the Birch of the Shah. Well. But have you ever questioned the canon of Scripture? Do you realize the Bible was put together by the Catholic Church? Do you realize Hebrews is not really important? Do you realize Hebrews is not really inspired? Come, let's sit down. Let's have a Midrash, and I can prove to you that the book of Hebrews is not inspired. That's what we do. We sit there and we argue theology all day. But that's not what the word of Yahweh says. The word of Yahweh says those who do the Torah are tzaddik. Not those who know the Torah. Those who do the Torah. Why? You missed the Torah. Don't, miss, don't leave me now. Work your way back. Work your way back. Plug in with me again. Look at verse 12. It tells you right there. Those with Torah Da'ah will perish with Torah Da'ah because sin is the issue, not Torah keeping. As many as have sinned without Torah Da'ah, they'll perish. Why? Because they also break the Torah. So who breaks the Torah? We, Nazarene Israelites, break the Torah by not applying the word and doing good and ministering the Torah to the hurting and the needy and those who are, who are in need in our society. We break the Torah because we know, and him that knows to do good and does it not, to him it is sin. So we Torah keepers break it. And all those that we laugh at, <laughs> Papa Pequeña. Mira, mira. <laughs> Como papa. And we're so busy laughing at them, but they're also breaking the Torah. Why? Because no one's ever taught them. No one's ever discipled them. They don't know right from wrong. They don't know Shabbat and Sunday keeping. So the point is in verse 12, both those with Torah knowledge and those without Torah knowledge, both are damned to hell. You getting the picture here? The only way to get around this is throughout the writings of Rav Shaul. If you want to throw out the writings of Rav Shaul, you can get around this. And that's what they do. Because they like to think that we like to think that we're superior to the church. So we can't deal with what Pablo says, because what he says is obvious. Because there are those who don't know the Torah, who do the Torah, who are doing the right thing. And then there are those who know the Torah, who are not doing the Torah, and they're doing the wrong thing. So, but both... Both, both, both groups break Torah, one by omission and the other by commission. I like that. That's true. We who know the Torah, we, we break the Torah by committing Lashon. Ra, slander, lying, not building. Oh, they'll build it. What do we do? What do we do as rabbis, as Nazarene leaders? What do we do? Somebody comes to us for help. Somebody comes to us for assistance. Well, we can only help you this one time. Why? Because we only have $50 in the bank account. Why? Because we have nothing set up to practice Torah. So what do we do? If we're honest, what do we do? Let's, tell, let's be honest. We send them to the church. Hello? You wouldn't send them to Rabbi Moshe. You know why? Because we got nothing to offer anybody. So what I did, and I said, well, at least I'm not going to be guilty as charged. I'm going to put together the high and be assured human resource center. And at least when there's another Nina Konachowski, and, and, and there's somewhere that, that need that maybe, 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 maybe there's a girl's home out there, maybe there's a boarding school that loves Yeshua and keeps the Torah, and if I could just find them and list them, and I could connect the user and the, and, and, and the consumer, uh, I mean the provider and the consumer together, I could make a connection for Yahweh and love Yeshua and practice the Torah. So that network is there for you. You ought to avail yourself of it. 
That's the first time it's ever been done.